great. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. Well, thanks so much to you all for, for being here. I, I wanted to just begin with a very uh, basic question. Is there an origin story for uh, the search? Was there a kind of moment when the seed of the idea for the show first began to take root? I, uh, I wanted to do something about sexual politics. Um, the feminist movement was very much in my mind. And, and when I explored that, that wasn't enough. And I can't remember exactly that there was that one, one moment where I got beyond that, but somehow Lily was always um, wanting more and more. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of it, too. <laughs> and I'm also curious, since we watched the, the film version tonight, uh, how you all went about translating the, uh, the stage show to the screen. What was, uh, was there anything interesting or challenging about that process? Well, I mean, we, we, we fussed over whether to just film the stage and whether to do what we did do. And I don't know how we came down on that, the side of that. Uh, like, as you were watching it tonight, did you think that it was, I, I, had, I questioned whether it was right to leave the character and go to the stage. Yes, I know that it was a it was because, a, um, like an experiment. I because you some, begin to think of the character. <laughs> <laughs> everything you go. <laughs> what are you all saying? Are you all saying that it was good to go back? Yeah, yeah. because you get Lily. Maybe you know performance. <laughs> <And> it was. <laughs> I, I, well, no, that's good. That that that's what. The consensus is no, but it's 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 also kind of. I mean, it, it's probably a, for those. I, I I try to see it through uh, other eyes, and I I can see how they would think that it was jarring or yeah. not. Or, or, or one one or one seems real, and the other seems staged or something. It, I was in conflict as I was watching it. I'm so glad to know that you all think that. We made the right decision. <laughs> well, there there are certain pieces. The people have spoken. <laughs> there are certain pieces that are just really, you know, delicious in, in being costumed and being there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Tina and Brandy. Yeah, I mm -hmm. really like that. Yeah, I was thinking of Tina and Brandy too. But, but it's like you have to pick the right place to go back so that you can reestablish the stage and. I don't know, you know, I don't know what we would do. We probably just wouldn't do it at all if, <laughs> if we had it to do over again. Though also the, um, the, the you know, the, the, the minimalism is also, uh, you know, very powerful in its own way. And another thing that I, I, I was wanted to ask you all uh, related to that was about uh, the sound, you know, because in, you know, uh, um, the, the stage parts, so many of the, uh, appurtenances of the theater have kind of fallen away, you know, costuming and stage design and props and so forth, but the sound is uh, very elaborate. You know, there must be hundreds of cues. Uh, and so, yeah, I was just w w wondering if you could uh, describe how you um, approached that uh, aspect of the material. Well, that, that was always Jane's idea. Even when we fir the first, one of the first things we did was uh, Edith Ann's album and uh, we did it with sound effects because Jane Jane did a whole, wrote a whole play once about somebody who collected sound effects. You know, <laughs> it was it's just a passion of yours that well, certainly I, is rich in the, the it's so rich in the theater. We were pushing the technology. Yeah, so. hold that up just so they oh, hear we, you. We were pushing the technology. <laughs> 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 So much. We, as a matter of fact, the only people that left us during the production were sound people. Because, because we just That's wore true. them out. We, 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 we wore them out. We did. 
it, the, we, we wanted more and more and more, and <clears throat> I just thought it was a, a wonderful element to have to support Lily. Oh, yeah, no, it and was. Then, then when we used it, she wanted more and more, too. She was just the Kleenex box, everything, you know, it was just any movement she had, she wanted to have a sound accompaniment. In the water bed, we had, you know, but, and the water bed wasn't even. That's, that's one of the great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all that stuff, that was really fun. And then, of course, the sounds also reflect the time. The water bed wouldn't be right for now and all that. So we had a lot of fun, but, but I do have some guilt about a lot of sound people that we kind of pushed to the edge. <laughs> um, I'm also curious about the uh, individual characters. Were there, were any way, were they kind of drawn from life in any way? Like, a, you know, chance encounters, people you knew, like? Well, I, I've been doing Lud and Marie. We did Lud and Marie in our, in our first uh, Broadway show. Oh, yeah. Lou uh, and I have Relatives similar to Lady yeah. Marie. Oh. We have, well, Jane is from Tennessee and my parents are from Kentucky. So, so. We, we have relatives like Lady Marie. <laughs> and um, as a matter of fact, I don't think I've had any comments from my relatives about Lady Marie. Have you? Oh, I'm hearing. Are you all hearing me? Yeah. Uh, um, well, I certainly want to pay attention to the sound after all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, and, and of course, me, I'm an old performer, so I've got the mic right up here, and we're about to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what was the question? What was oh, just about if uh, the, there were the, there any way, like the uh, inspirations behind the various oh. characters, if they were uh, drawn from life or. Um. Uh, well, a lot of a lot well, of Trudy, I kind of look to myself. Because I have lapses <laughs> of the synapses. I have a little bit oh, of... Oh, she um, was a creative... Yeah, you were a creative consultant. And I was a creative consultant, if you can believe it. For Kimberly Clark. <laughs> Kleenex. And, and that didn't last any longer than our sound engineers <laughs> lasted for us. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I don't know how I got that job, but I thought of some really great ideas and one or two they use, but I don't think too many people bought them at the supermarket, but. Um, <laughs> well, I don't want to go well, off on that. Yeah, you, we don't she, Jane has really invented a lot of stuff. She was always just like way ahead of the curve. Like she invented, you know, she created like, uh, you know, plastic furniture that was stuffed inside, you know, like blow up, for, wasn't blown up, but she put Wait. sand in it. That's sand. You oh, made that chair with oh, years ago, 50, 60 years ago. I call that an idea. That was not really on the market. No, you didn't put it on the market, but I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it didn't well go that's to... only because you, you probably abandoned it, because if, she does, if it doesn't just fly out the window on its own, <laughs> she just forgets about it. I did. I don't think this has anything to do with the question. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to pay attention to this. Question. I know, you're right. I have to well, be. I, I, another thing that I, uh, uh, I wanted to ask is I was thinking uh, as I was watching this about the Joan Churchill documentary about the um, development of the search when you were workshopping it and its lead up to Broadway. And there's some really um, amazing sequences of, of you with the, an acting coach. Um, with Peggy, yes, Peggy Fury. Exactly with Peggy Fury, exactly. And I was, I was. It made me curious about how you worked with her to kind of prepare for the. Uh, well, I worked. I just kind of worked on different uh, characters or moments or just my own feeling and, uh, you know, she'd been my co. I met her on All of Me, and she's now died. And uh, but uh, yeah, we we were great friends and. She would work with me, and I'd go to her class. And in fact, someone sent me an email the other day saying I, that they were there through a lot of the development because I would, well, I mean, Jane and I would work on it, but I would go to class and I would do a monologue. And so they'd be there like when I did the suicide note or something initially. I, I, there's no way to explain how it came about. I mostly fell to my knees with my arms outstretched saying to Jane, 
write more, write more. <laughs> and Lily was such a quick study. Again, we're not answer. You don't expect us to answer your questions always. But, but um, Lily was always a quick study. So I would write a monologue, and I'd think, oh, good. Now I can rest a few days, you know. And, but she would always learn the monologue so quickly <laughs> that I'd have to write another one the next day, practically. Well, I'd come and I was I, so tired from the writing, the, you know, the <laughs> struggle. Oh, gosh. And she was very demanding. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm surprised I lasted longer than the sound engineers myself. But, <laughs> but um, let's go back to your question. <laughs> Well, no, I was, but also no. when I was thinking about the, the d ser seeing the, the search and development was so uh, revealing. And uh, another thing that I was really intrigued by was um, the audience, because, uh, I mean, of course, the, um, the search ends with such a kind of um, beautiful monologue about uh, the audience as the real source of the goosebumps. But uh, in the Joan Churchill documentary, as you're workshopping the piece, uh, uh, the audience is solicited for feedback about the, the the work in progress, and so I was wondering when you were developing this show, uh, yeah, um, how was that feedback? Did you learn from your audiences? Were, were you kind of surprised well, by the, those early reactions? Well, Jane was never there. I didn't learn from oh, the audience. Oh, okay. So <laughs> nothing. Okay. <laughs> in fact, I didn't. I think we could have gone to Broadway much sooner mm. than she. <laughs> she just wanted to. She just wanted to dig deeper. And then she'd get with Peggy, and they'd go deeper. And I didn't always agree with how deep they went oh or God. whatever they were doing. But it seemed like they were getting so deep and so into it. It was very Stanislavski, I guess. Um, <laughs> like, and, <laughs> and I, I don't, I don't know. It seemed like we were working on things so hard, she'd already memorized the, the, the thing, like I said, she was a quick study, but she just wouldn't let go. She wanted to get, well, on all the mannerisms, all the behavioristic things that she worked so hard. To me, she always had it quicker than she realized she had it. Now, I blame Peggy sometimes for that. <laughs> because, so Peggy and I had an on and off relationship <laughs> because of that. She was wonderful, but she made Lily work harder than Lily had to work. Lily had it quicker than, uh, than Peggy thought she had it. So well, Pe Peggy, Peggy didn't, was wonderful. Peggy didn't really get to see the whole, I mean, you know. No, because you took so long with Peggy to <laughs> for her to see it. She didn't, she didn't get to see it. <laughs> she didn't get to see a lot, but she's, she was wonderful. She, no, Peggy yeah. worked with she, Sean Penn. And she was wonderful. Worked so. with just about everybody. But I just from said she made my life a little miserable because <laughs> we could, I think we could have gotten to she Broadway about now. a year ahead of time. Uh, I was also wondering, um, <laughs> seeing uh, seeing the piece again, uh, you know, is seeing it now in 2019, does it uh, kind of resonate in any uh, different way for you? Like from the vantage of uh, the present, does, uh, uh, does it give you uh, a different perspective on uh, the search or there, or no, I don't uh, know. Shock and awe comes to mind because I feel like I haven't seen this in so long. And um, sometimes I've been really pleasantly surprised and sometimes I, I I, I didn't cringe exactly, but I thought, why did I, was I too sentimental, and yet I was dealing with things that I wanted to be sentimental, if, if that was, you know, part of humanity. And so I, I couldn't not criticize certain things if you're talking about tonight versus, you know. Um, I used to love, sometimes I would go, I, Lily didn't demand that I always go to, to every show. I didn't. <laughs> Um, as I said, we had the show much quicker than she knew that we had it. <laughs> she and well, we Peggy had it. It came. It, we it, were in in Santa Fe, and I kept arguing oh. with Jane because the whole Carnegie Hall thing had been in the front part with Trudy, and and then uh, and I left out the line about Lonnie. I took it with Kate when she's talking in the in the nightclub. 
I said, well, I don't, I'm not convinced that Kate would take Trudy's uh, umbrella hat. <laughs> <laughs> and people in Santa Fe had, you know, it's a skiing community, a winter community, and they had, many people were there several times because we were there for two weeks, and they saw the show developing, and the night, and so Jane just said, just put it in tonight, you know, humor me and put it in, and so she rarely <laughs> humored me. She, she would very often so, go and, for nice so not putting it in, you know. So I, I said, I, in the play, I said, you know, and Lonnie, I did the strangest thing. I took it. The audience literally leapt to its feet. <laughs> the first, that, because they were so familiar with the play and they, and they knew the play was complete. That's right. That happened so many times. <laughs> that, but it, <laughs> Well, that was an that was an epiphany. That was, was it was great, and we and we we just ran. I ran back to Jane wasn't at the theater, of course. <laughs> I, I, but there was somebody in our I was company. Working on the sound, though. <laughs> there was somebody in our company who used to say there are plenty of fans who've seen the search more than she, than Jane has. <laughs> oh so, God! But anyway. Um, well, speaking of fans, I think we probably have uh, time for a couple of. Uh, Questions maybe from the audience. Uh, we have one here, one here. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Oh, we have, we have passed down the mic. Oh, yeah. And then um, I don't. Uh, hello, and thank you. Um, this is a priceless night to be here with you. Um, and and I, I wanted to speak about the timelessness of your writing because I had the extraordinary experience of seeing the play when it first came to Broadway and I went with my mother and I'd never seen anything so daring verbally with her. 20 years later, I went with my son and it meant a lot to, every, every 20 years I've been seeing this and it, it means so much every time. Thank you. Thank you so much. You want my mic? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using it apparently. More work for the sound engineers. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. This is unbelievable. Um, and uh, I actually have a question for each of you, if that's okay. Um, Jane, uh, I'd never seen the film before, and it was incredible. There's so much to unpack. One thing that really stuck out to me was the alien aspect, and it kind of uh, reminded me of almost like a feminist Vonnegut in a sense. Was Vonnegut an inspiration for you in all, at all? Vonnegut. You said Vonnegut, Yeah, right? Kurt Vonnegut, like Slaughterhouse yes, Five. I love, I love um, his work. And I probably, I wasn't thinking of that during the time, but probably have been influenced by him. By him. Um, I, I always loved his humor. I just loved, I loved his attitude about everything. And yes, yes, that's very perceptive of you. I hadn't thought, thought of that myself about how it might Thank be. you. Maybe if you had seen the show a few more times. <laughs> oh God, I deserve that. <laughs> That's wonderful. And Lily, um, for you, um, totally unrelated to the film, a different film. Um, one of my favorite memories was watching one of your movies with my uncle when I was very little. We watched it over and over again to the point where the v VHS tape actually broke. Um, it, it might not have been one of your classics, but what was it like working on the Beverly Hillbillies? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I enjoyed it because, well, I didn't, I turned that role down about seven times because I said, I don't want to play Mrs. Hathaway. It's too scary. I mean, there are people who are such fans of the hillbillies, and it'll just be sacrilegious if I take this role. Uh, and then my, my own mother said, and I also said, I don't want to play an old spinster, <laughs> like, the, like she's as she's described so often. Uh, and my mother, my mother, I talked to my mother, and she said, Oh, you're going to play Miss Hathaway. And Beverly Hillbillies, that's gonna, you're going to be so good. <laughs> and I was just dumbfounded. So my girlfriend, Pen Penelope, was directing Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, Penelope and so I called her up and I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And, uh, 
and I had fun doing it because I had, uh, you know, just acting goofy and opening the door for Mr. Uh, my boss. What was his name? I forgot Rides his name. Dale. I thought she was good, and I, I really. Oh, thought, you really made yeah. the character your I, own. I should have played her my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies. Hi, thank you so much. Um, this has been a really cool evening. I just had a question about the process, because um, there's a lot of characters up there. Did you work on them one at a time, or were you weaving them all at the same no, time? I worked at them contrapuntally. Very, very, um, that's the way my mind works anyway. I'm very much like Trudy, the back lady, <laughs> in, in, in my thinking, but, and I like the concept of where books fall open, just mm -hmm. the idea of just serendipitous things that happen. And um, I like, I love the concept of dial switching. You dial switch and you're bound to think of something that you wouldn't have really, it's a creative tool almost. Wow. And, and so I, uh, I don't use it as a creative tool, but I love, I love the, uh, thing of, uh, now there are times like with Kate when I was using her for the end of the movie, I had to focus, you know, focus is very hard for me sometimes. So I go, I go to different things and think of it as a creative process when actually sometimes I need to focus and not do the other thing. But as a creative um, type of um, technique, I think going to other things bring, sometimes you bring something into the character that you're supposed to be focusing on too. Um, so no, I was working on different things. There, was a, there, were, there were times when I had to put things aside and just Kate was one where, because I was just using her for the end because I really wanted it to be about consciousness and I took the wealthy woman who was really touched by, by Trudy and the street people. And so um, the street people sometimes would come to mind during Kate, and that would help me. But that's just the way my mind works or doesn't work <laughs> half the time. Very cool. Um, um, and of course, I go around behind her closing those books, putting them back on the book. <laughs> um, that's it. She doesn't like a book that falls off the shelf. <laughs> I don't know that she's in process. <laughs> I'm just tidying up. Um, <laughs> um, well, if you want to learn even more about how their minds work, I encourage you to come on Saturday afternoon where we'll, um, they'll both be in conversation uh, uh, with uh, writer Hilton Alls, the co-curator of uh, this series. Uh, this has been a wonderful opening night. Thank you so much, Lily and Jane. Thank you.